this. Welcome home. When I was a child, coming to the island, as a Scots-born child, grown up in the city of Edinburgh, and then men and women in the village, like Mikey Dan Gallagher or Kathleen Guilty, when they met me, they would say to me as a child, welcome home. And I was always slightly confused about that, because I thought, what does that mean? But as I've grown older and come back again and again, that welcome home is a really, really part of what it is to be part of the Ackle Island community, part of the Toulouse clan. It's that homeness that you can have when you... Okay. It's that, that's, it's that homeness that is being part of a community, even if you're in exile. It's those, if you're a child, those awful aunties who come for Sunday afternoon tea after mass. And you have to listen to them all <laughs> as you're trying to play the telly. It's that being going into a foreign city and looking out for someone who's a connection with home, a community that's spread over the earth, but still retains a sense of cohesion and a sense of identity. So, welcome home, everyone. Because now, if you are connected with the Tulis clan, as you all are in some way, you are really standing on sacred ground. This land here, this building here, reaches back at least to the 1830s, if not to the 1800s. That the Tulises, in some shape or form, have been living here, in this place, this small patch of ground on earth, for over 250 years. Look around you, behind you, men on. See the path, the mark, that's the old road that used to come down from the sound, actually, down that way, on towards Kiel. That used to be the main road Whoa. into Akalain, in Lower Akal. It used to be nearly 30 or 40 houses. Behind us here, the ruined village of Dukinella. This was once the centre, one of the biggest communities in Akal itself. It's, although it's kind of buried away, there was an old Roman Catholic chapel. The chapel that you went to at Mass today, was actually built in 1851. This chapel here, which is abandoned and lost, was here before then. It was such an important place that even the Archbishop of Chum came here to preach and rail against, I don't know if you know about the Protestant colony up in De Burt. This was a very important place and it still is a very important place. This building here, what we do know about it it was marked on the first Ordnance Survey map on the summer of 1838, when two English Her uh, Majesty's Royal Engineers, Captain Stoddart and Lieutenant Chater, came to map and name this place. And then he named this townland here, which stretches just from the back of the beach there, over beyond the Shruffle and round of it, Ducanella Thulis. It's about, I think it's at 200 hectares. It's a tiny bit. But he named that place after the people who are living here. And it has been in the maps ever since. And this house is marked on that map. And this is the house where uh, every Tulis probably was either, they were either born in or they visited. I know that um, Michael Tulis, the patriarch of the Chicago clan, there's one of his relatives there. Your great, that great patriarch was probably born in this house here, right here. Um, this house was uh, abandoned in 1937, but up until that time, it was probably in continuous use for over 100 years, if not 200 years. So you really are standing as close to history of any, it's not just the history of the Tulises, it is the history of this whole island, of all of these communities. But what is particular about the Tulises is that you can trace it back, that you can trace it back to the townland, you can trace it back literally to this house. What I also do see before me is the results of thousands of journeys of, of hope, of uh, the, 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 this place here and the life that people had here was incredibly harsh. Um, as you can see around you, we are in the middle of nature, subject to nature. And for hundreds of years, 
our families and the people and the rest of the people on the island endured some of the worst of human experiences. Landlordism, exploitation, poverty, continual emigration, but we have survived. And everyone here who's linked is linked from that, those families who grew up here and left and to find better lives and come back or return and also to stay here and endure. Endure some of the worst things that people can endure. During the time of the famine, probably a third of the island starved to death. That is out of 2,000 people out of 6,000. Um, so it's, and then again, with the kind of immigration. I remember in my, even my own life in the 1960s <laughs> that so many people were immigrating, that, that, that people were fleeing for the boats. But now you can see around us that Akal has become much more prosperous. Um, so this is a story of a lot of hope, a lot of bravery, a lot of it. When you think about people coming from this place, traveling to, the new, to America, to Australia, not knowing anyone, not knowing what, not being particularly well equipped and founding a new life. So our, our history, our collective family history, is a history of triumph against the odds. Just, I'll just point around you, you know, what hasn't changed in the last 200 years? That great mountain, Crohan, yeah, sleeve more. All of that stuff, what you see around you, apart from the slight changes in the houses, is what your ancestors would have lived through and saw as well. I'm going to have to turn off this phone. <laughs> um, so a couple of uh, years ago, <laughs> a couple of years ago, in order to commemorate that, I wrote a poem called If I Could Sing which is also in praise of that, one of the great strengths of Irish culture. You think about the Irish weight culture. When I talk about keeping your culture with you, um, in every commun Irish community, wherever they are on, in, on the earth, in Australia, Tasmania, in the States, that moment of coming together when someone in the community dies and is lost, that culture didn't die with people here. It was transplanted with them. So. I'm going to recite a bit of If I Could Sing, and then, thank goodness, Tommy, Tommy Johnson is going to do a version of it in Irish, in the language that our ancestors would have spoken and conversed in every day. So if you bear with me, this is a bardic poetry. It's something you might not be too aware of, but it was there at the gates of Troy, and is here now at the gates of this Tula's homestead. If I could sing, I would not sing of the fallen city of Ilium, and Hector's blood dried and stained in sand beneath that wretched Skion gate. No, if I could sing, I would sing of an island far out to the west, rising sea plucked, spray lashed, a citadel of stone, walled deep in the blue ocean, another Troy an Irish Troy, closer to the sinking sun. I would sing of green mountains, stone and cliff, salt grasses, wandering bands of fattening white wooled sheep and the sound of surf running river in the air and the last roads of a continent draining into water. I would sing of an unhaltered sky, another ocean, of fighting cockcrow clouds, red, yellow, grey, black, filling up the eye to infinity. If I was given voice, I would sing too of a savage place, untamed, of newborn storms come in rage from the wild waters to the west, to tear at earth, tree and rock and shake the world and windows in terror. I would whisper in weary fear of lying buried, fathoms deep awed again by this wind god, returned like Achilles to suck the air, life, roof, bed, all within, up into the maelstrom. And if I could sing, 
I would sing to of summer days. When the sun rises in a god chariot behind Minon to the east and blazes through air blue heavens. And dolphins leap in surf so close to shore that you could swim to them and play. <coughs> I would sing of a green glass sea, of sweating stillness, of the drift of turf smoke like perfume over the villages, and sing too for those guardians at the gate, the blue-eyed sheepdogs of Ducanella deliciously spreading themselves out on tar and gravel road to cool their molten fur bodies. And if I could sing, I would sing too of the people of this aged place, of those born and gone, of old clackens of houses, once shelters before the storm, now stone-toothed ruins, broken open to the elements, twin gable-ended tombstones enclosing departure and loss, their grave flowers nettle beds, bones bleached clean, every nail, wire and stick strewn like relics across this island of perpetual exile, their seed scattered across the face of the earth. And if I could sing, I would sing too of those who stayed, for in that song I would sing of the oldest faith of mankind that ne never died here, even after that other Troy fell to the Greeks. In my praise song, I would sing on and on for my island mothers and fathers, who in coffin, timber, hearst and cart, poverty and strain, never faltered to cradle the dead to rest. Water, fire, suicide or rage, cancer, youth or age, whatever circumstance. If you could hear my song, you too would listen in rapture to the Imro Kinsha, crying out, grieving, heart struck still for Hector and his children, bound in the same grieving that the living and the dead and the dying <coughs> must commingle in the sickening and the grave, ancient and new, an eternal chorus, mourners, keeners, pilgrims at the wake, bound to in sure belief that in this unselfish giving to the dead, that newborn sons and daughters will spring from the lamenting wombs of the pulsating living. In my praise song, I would sing on and on for these mortal mothers and fathers who were never vanquished and still hold fast the line in the ice cube touch of a corpse's hand and the warm palm of the bereaved. Ever ready to share death day's sorrow, the cut wound, the slashed grave on Sleeve Moor Mountain. So sorry for your trouble, so sorry for your trouble. On and on until the last of the morning line and tears exhaust themselves giving all in death that we, the living, can, <coughs> our very presence. <coughs> no, if I could sing, I would not sing of the fallen city of Ilium, but of an island, this island, far out to the west, <coughs> rising, sea plucked, spray lashed, a citadel of stone, walled deep in the blue ocean, where the last best hope of humanity beats on a mortal being incarnate in flesh shall not live, love, or die alone. And if I could sing, if we could sing together, my brothers and sisters, surely then we would never stop the singing of this song. Thank you.